Welcome to the start of a brand new work week and the end of a month. My name is Joyce Jukes and this is The Breakfast Show on TSM Nigeria TV. Words have it that with age comes with wisdom. Can we, however, say so for those pilots in the affairs of government in Nigeria? Despite the willingness of Nigerian youth to participate in politics, you are yet to receive the inclusion required to gain representation in different arms of government. This morning on The Breakfast Show, we are joined by one who is seasoned in what, in what he does. He is the founder of the Not Too Young to Lead Initiative, a youth advocate, and also worthy of mention is that he is a senior a special as, uh, advisor to the governor of Delta State on youth development. Talking about Mr. Elvis Akbobi. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Fine. Well, thank you for joining us on set today. Thanks for having me. Sir, going through your profile, I was wowed. You know, you're a youth advocate, you came about the Not Too Young to Lead initiative, you're a special assistant to the governor of Delta State on youth development. How come? What, what, what triggered you to come about the Not Too Young to Lead initiative? Um, a lot. Let me start with that because um, you see, as a young man growing, uh, I grew up in the slum of Igbe Street. You know, <laughs> well, that's I don't see me, you know. <laughs> Igbe Street worry. Okay. And um, I looked around me and I noticed that uh, there is this um, stage of helplessness and hopelessness among my peers. And you know, yeah, if you are in an environment where you are not motivated, you are not inspired you you see different things happening like um you see a lot of persons gravitating towards crime and all that and i saw myself I was like i need to break this jinx of helplessness and hopelessness so the journey started about um 2006 i was privileged to do uh my it in government house okay so we are seeing where it started from yes i did my it there served there i got to learn and one way or the other, I saw myself growing, mm. learning under people, as in gaining experience from people who are older than me. And today, I'm an essay to the governor. But four years back, I said, I need to mirror excellence to other young persons. Mm. I need to be able to tell people, if people see, hear my story, they should be able to, it should motivate them that if, if me, from a very, very <laughs> poor background can metamorphose into becoming an essay to the governor then and still on that construction, then it's possible for anybody. So, and you see, the best way to mirror excellence or the best way to sell hope is peer-to-peer -peer influence. I started influencing my friends and we came up, started the initiative. Basically, we started with advocacy. We started with, um, you know, you have to start from somewhere. Started from Delta State. I had to collaborate with um, the likes of persons who are ahead of me, Sam Sinitodo, yeah. Yaga Africa, Hamzat Lawa. I draw my strength and ideas from them because I need to bring that thing back to Delta State, back to South South. And today we're making waves to be able to push and amplify for some young House of Assembly members. Mm -hmm. But lately we're not just pushing for young people alone, young people with character because we've seen the brightest of hope bearers, young people, when they get there, they put us in a very negative light. What you said now just want, um, launched me into the next question that I have for you personally. Is Do you really think that youths are willing or youths are capable of taking the mantle of power when it comes to politics? Yes, we are. If you don't, you know, if you don't, I always, my, I always like using myself as an example. If you don't give people the chance to showcase their potentials, you wouldn't know what they have. What a lot of young, well, there are a lot of young, a lot of potentials that are dying daily just because there are no persons to encourage them. There are no persons to tell them, ah, you could do better. There are no person around them, around their environment to inspire them. So you see those potentials dying. And I always tell people, you see, Nigeria was so focused on oil, but what we grow us is not buried underground. Is in the potentials of young people. I walked into this studio today. I'm so amazed because I saw young persons. He's given more chance. We put Nigeria on a greater platform 
But we are in a system where it seems as if we celebrate things we shouldn't, we should, we should be ashamed of. So the bleakness alone. So when I see young people, even in this environment, this Nigeria, where we don't have this enabling environment to thrive, to compete with our contemporaries, when I see young people thinking outside the box and doing things, I'm even awesome. inspired. Yeah. Let, let's, let's talk about uh, young people in politics for a bit. Okay. Now, uh, according to the United Nations, our estimated uh, population is about 182 million, and this is half of it. Uh, we, have, we have people under 30. Now, we see young people in leadership positions in the private sector doing their thing. Like, this is private owned. Now, we can do more, and we need to be included in politics. And I think politics is not something you wake up in the morning and say, I have a passion for. We need things like electoral colleges. Do we have electoral colleges in Nigeria where if I wake up one day and say, okay, I want to govern, I want to run for a certain position where I can get guidelines, where I can be guided properly on how to go about it? We don't have that. So that's why as a young man, if you're passionate about becoming a leader or making a difference, changing Nigeria, you have to look for a very good mentor. When I mean good mentor, you, you not monitoring game because a lot of people, if you go to... If you go online now, a lot of persons follow people that are, they are financially stable and not people with character. Maybe because the system celebrates people that are financially stable, then uh, living people with character. But you see, like I'll go back again. I've been in the system for quite a long time and I've, I tend to glean on the knowledge of, I've seen commissioners go home. I've seen speakers go, I've seen governors, they go, they, all that came in. So when, I think that is what I have above my peers today or my colleagues that are essays. I know when politics is about taking place and I know when governance is about taking mm, place. There's a difference. Yes. With, with all this wealth of knowledge you have, I think you should set up an electoral <laughs> college, yes. Because, because you've, you've actually made this story, right? you mentor other people. Because it's not just about telling people you can do it. We have a lot of inspirational speakers out there. Now we have the, 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 the do's and the don'ts. Don't. It's not just enough to be motivated. It's, it, it also counts when you understand the books, the other workings, how it's done, how to apply it. Where yeah. to use it? I have a handful of young persons that are under my own, let me say, not too young to leave college. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because um, I believe we complain every day that uh, we pray for better leaders. Mm -hmm. If you go to church, there are some churches that say prayer for Nigeria in distress, prayer for a better Nigeria. You find out that we should be praying for better citizens instead of better leaders. Because every leader today, was once an ordinary citizen. True, true, yeah. And it's what you are cultured with as a citizen you bring on board when you become a leader. All right, so I have a question. So um, in 2018, the, from 2016 down to 2018, there was a lot of conversation around not too young to run. Oh. Luckily for us, in May of 2018, the president, Muhammad Buhari, signed a bill into law that reduced the age requirements for several positions, House of Reps, Senate, and governorship. But in Nigeria, we sign things a lot. Yes. <laughs> Implementation has always been a problem. So from your perspective and looking into your organization and then looking into governance in Nigeria, has there been enough implementation of the not too young to run bill in Nigeria? I wouldn't say so because I believe signing that thing into law, fine, we achieved something. But what we're looking at now is an independent candidacy because it's not seem as if you know, the cost of electioning is very, very... Getting tickets and you, all. You understand? And then, you see, we young people clamor, we want young persons to be there. You find out that if four friends, young friends, they, there's this taste for, or oh, I want to be on the table of this show, make it, no one go first. That one becomes, um, there's this hate. Hate? Um, yes, among, you see, the relationship, I'm telling you from experience, the relationship produces... So are you saying this, is ex this hate is exclusive to young people? Both, people both young, young and older, older people. Okay. You, you, understand, <laughs> you, you understand? You now find out that when things are going wrong in the government, maybe where you find yourself, your friend will be like, is, are you putting up with them? But you forget that you have to be in it to change it. And when one person there, one person is there, that person, will, his attitude will create path for other persons. Mm -hmm. Because... We clamor every day, I uh, want young persons to be on the table of decision making. I'm not sure from the kind of country 
we are in today, the kind of leaders we have today. I'm not sure we can have it 100%, but do we meant gradually. The advocacy brought about, um, McIndy started it, mm -hmm. of Oil State. A, uh, a friend of mine is a commissioner, 26 years, he was appointed as, he he left NYSC. The commissioner is doing very, very well. Their speaker is um, 32 years, he should be 33 now. Back, Delta, let me use Delta State. It used to be this um, um, political recycling, but with the advocacy, gradually, we're using media as a tool. They gave us a commissioner of 40 years. I think the next commissioner for youth who should be around 30 years. So, so, so in 2019, we saw um, Adamu Garba, okay. a 36-year-old year old man at the time, uh, come out to become president, president of Nigeria. Yeah. But um, I'm very sad to say that, uh, judging from the recent happenings, yeah. mm, we know already <laughs> that it was just nothing but a sham. Mm -hmm. But a lot of young people would have said at the time that, okay, we okay, have a young person, let's, let's stand behind him. But, um, well, I'm glad, I'm grateful to God that we did not. So, 2023 is coming. And we're already seeing a lot of things happening in the PDP and the APC. Is there a way that young people can come together? Because I'm not sure that any of these dominant parties would you know, bring out a 35-year-old or 36-year-old to represent. They will, but um, I want to take you back to the uh, recent pre uh, protests and SARS. Do you know the leaders, they never thought a time would come when Nigerians, young Nigerians will unite mm -hmm. and you know, push a particular cause. The problem, I notice they do is this divide and rule system and trying to starve us of funds mm. because they know they have the funds. And when but, they bring it, they, they, bring it, they will just. But you see, I always, on every platform, every, every, I find myself, I always want to say this that power is not given. You get it, you grab it. And ahead of 2023, from judging from the NSAS protests, those power brokers, they know that they are in for a very, very good ride because most young persons are tired. For me, I'm tired. I'm just one privileged individual among millions of young people that are helpless and hopeless. And if more young persons with character don't come into the system, I will still be, I, they will still have my name on the honors of history of you were in a particular government that did this, that did that. Mm -hmm. So my main, my ambition is to bring in, amplify the voices of other muted uh, young persons and bring in more young persons into, we will get it, I'm very, very sure. Okay. If we, we extinguish this ethnic, by ethnic by difference in oh, ethnicity, yes. party lines, we will get it, yeah, the, the, the purpose and ambition should be making Nigeria better. I hope we make Nigeria better. These people, they've done their own. Let's do ours. Okay, so um, there's a conversation online for a while. During the NSAS process, a, a group of people came together and said that we need to create a youth democratic party that will be constituted of just only young people and lots of flowery things were said. <laughs> but some people pointed out that we have some young people in government. Yahaya Bello is a young person. Mm. Desmond Elliott in all his... Mm. It's a young person. Now, these are young people that we have put in power and they have not performed. So do we genuinely need to push more young people or should we just find people that can do the job irrespective of their age? Energy. Energy, okay. Yeah. Uh, we, why most, I believe, uh, most of those old wagons, I call them, they don't perform is by the digital generation. Hmm. And um, their generation, you can't bring someone in the analog generator to solve digital problems. Hmm. You take, for example, during the COVID-19, a lot of these leaders had problems with communicating. And it's our world. We know how to handle all that. That is by the wayside. You talked about um, um, Despot Elliot, uh, Yaya Bello, and a handful of other young persons that are not giving us good Representation, representation on person. You judge people with their trademark. Mm. You can't hide yourself. I keep telling people we are meat trees. You can't hide yourself forever. Obviously, something happened, and I'll use the small as an example. He showed himself to the world, mm -hmm. but will not say because of one bad egg, throw away the entire aspect of the egg. That's still good.
people willing to be on the driver's seat to take Nigeria better. And it's going to be a collective effort because you notice we always criticize as young people, this is why, this is this, this is why. In your own little space, where you're working now, I presume maybe you're the head of six persons. How are you leading? You can't lead there properly, my dear. You can't lead an entire state. Mm -hmm. It starts from that place. That's why mentoring is key. It's what you do here, what you are cautioned with here, that you will display if you get to AIT or you get to CNN. Hmm. So, above all, <laughs> let's always. Okay. Let's <laughs> bring it home now because okay. you know, our time is uh, gradually getting far spent. The final questions that I want to ask, and I want you to explain shades as much as possible go big or go home. What truly can young people do? We've seen that we can rise up. But then again, we saw how the Nigerian government responded to young people rising up. And the people are saying that in 2023, we're going to go out, we're going to do more, we're going to vote. We know that we have the power, we know that we have the numbers. But from your experience and the work that you have been doing, what do you genuinely think within our power, the average young person on the streets of Azig, being you called it, <laughs> what can they do? Okay, um, to every young Nigerian, it is possible. You see, we celebrate um, Rwanda. I'm not sure their leaders did it alone. They, it, it, it became a success because of the potentials of young people. And, you see, and a lot of people shy away. Politics, oh, that's how they always do. You can't com keep complaining and expect things to change. You have to be in it to win it. The moment those old wagons see the interest, see the passion, the test to change the narrative in this country, Everybody, they will be the one. Uh, there's no need for me to go. I, I, someone came to meet me the other day. I was telling me that he wants to contest for counselor. I told him, you bring your son. Oh. Me, I won't support you. It's not like you're not good, but you are way above that age. You register for a political party. Then our PVC. Because if you can stay on the line to, we have time to go and do a vote in Big Brother, we should have time to vote in our election. The possibility and of you getting <laughs> shot voting Big Brother and getting shot it's voting insane, in Nigeria, right? the ratio is, is much. I don't get I said the possibility of you getting shot or assaulted mm. voting at your polling station is so uh, much higher than when you are voting for Big Brother. Yes, that's why, that's, why, that's why too, we are pushing for this uh, political uh, electoral reform mm -hmm. where we can vote for them, where just like other persons are doing, and I pray it come to pass, but I noticed so a lot of persons are comfortable with the status quo. Because, you know, once things get better, once those laws come, are being enacted, they, will, they can't church change the, the, um, the whole process. But you see, with time, gradually, people are not getting away. Mm -hmm. Gone are those days where they just allow you, you do things. With time, you find out that, you see some, uh, how some states now, they've gone back to the bill that says, for back governors, the, the uh, entitlement the they pension. have, the pension, mm -hmm. they are started you know, working on it. With time, you find out that a governor, you just go there, you serve the people. Those luxurious life, you too, then you will not know if the test is to make impact or the test is to, the test, the test you have is just to, you know, make money because a lot of young people lately, they all, once you, you see a young man, if you interview the person, they tell you, I want to become the governor so I can make money. I want to become the House of Assembly member so I can make money. No, it's not meant to be like that. Basically because they see some persons who weren't very comfortable before. They remember they got into the corridors of power. They become very, very financially stable. Uh -huh. Like <laughs> flaunting those things. Those things. And it's our collective wealth. Uh -huh. So we should, I urge every young Nigerian that, the journey, the race for a better Nigeria, it's determined by the passion we put in. Thank you so very much, Mr. Elfiza Kobe, founder, Not Too Young to Lead Initiative, essay to the governor of Delta State, a youth advocate. And from all we've gathered so far, the truth is character is key. If you're a young Nigerian interested in politics, just like Mr. Elvis said, 
mentoring is important because at the end of the day, your character is going to show face itself when you get to the top. That's all we can take on the breakfast show this morning. Thank you for joining us. Please do also subscribe to all our socials. That's TSL Nigeria TV and subscribe on our YouTube channel. The link is just down there below, TSL Nigeria TV. My name is Uzeizi Udwefe Ideho. Have a great week ahead. Stay connected to TSL Nigeria and get updates on the go all day, every day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel on TSL Nigeria Space TV and join our online family.